Thank you. Thank you, Ramzi Cortez, for the time match. I think uh, today is a very special day. He loves them, you know, very much. Maybe because of lack of people. So anyway, uh, we welcome all of you who are here in the house of God wearing red, reminding us this is the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples and all those people who were gathered there. So we are celebrating a birthday in such a way that the church is alive and well and doing God's mission and God's ministry in this world. And I want to welcome all of you who are here and those of you who are joining us through the Facebook Live. Please stay with us and worship with us. This is a time of worship for an hour, a little more, and uh, you'll enjoy the music and enjoy the songs, the hymns, and the message all for your spiritual growth. So stay with us and join us for this and welcome all of you. And at this uh, time, Dean... Uh, Lovages will take over and lead us. Good morning. I'd like to add my welcome to everybody here in the sanctuary and everybody out there in Facebook. Um, a few announcements this morning. One choir name that didn't get into the bulletin, Tanya Lambert is joining the choir today, and Kai Florib is away this week. So welcome, Sean, and we thank you for that. The beautiful flowers on the altar this morning this morning are given by John and Karen Peterson in memory of their grandparents, and we, we thank them for that contribution. Quick announcement, the link to some additional problems with Yahoo, AOL, and Verizon email accounts. So if, you're, uh, if you have one of those, your email may have been delayed or you may be getting multiples. Um, that happened in the past, and we've had some of that again this week. Uh, reminder, this is the last week for the She Boxes for the Share the Love Month. So if you've taken one of these boxes, please get it back to the church by next um, Monday. Um, well, next Sunday, I'll say next Sunday. And I guess there are a couple more boxes available to be filled if you would like to take one on your way out today or pick one up during the week. So now we have a special announcement, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Good morning, everyone. I'm Justin Neff, and on behalf of the entire Staff Parish Relations Committee, we'd like to welcome you all for joining us for our Staff and Volunteer Appreciation Sunday. In a typical year, the SBRC would have celebrated our staff back early in the fall, but uh, as we all know, the last 15 months have been anything but typical. And so we're taking a few moments this morning during the service to say thank you and recognize our small but very dedicated staff who have risen to the many challenges we have faced over the past year. As a congregation, it is our expectation that everything functions smoothly in our church. But behind the scenes, and also behind the camera, our staff has been frantically running to keep the wheels turning for us all. This morning, for everyone's safety, we will not have the staff come to the front of the sanctuary, but for those in the sanctuary this morning, please feel free to, get, to stand up and, and give a wave just so that we know where you are. But you don't have to. So I'm going to run through some names quickly and just some notes. Uh, Pastor Sundar, our spiritual leader, was able to transition us seamlessly from in-person services to Facebook Live and now a combination of both all while adapting to the constantly changing regulations we face. His calm guidance and encouragement have been a blessing, and we look forward to a more normal final year for his final year at our church. So thank you, Pastor Sundar. Gail Welkley skillfully manages the church office as our administrative assistant. Pleasant, competent, and thoughtful. She has navigated the challenges this year presented once she could return to the office safely. Jackie Crawfurst, our organist and accompanist, has kept the gift of music flowing constantly throughout the year. Her playing supported the early video services and is now the backbone of the choir, as she always has been, and as well as an additional special music offering 
that have been presented. So thank you, Jackie. Herb Lamb, our choir director, brought back a small but mighty choir to grace our church services with the music we all crave. Special holiday music offerings were an additional gift. His energy, enthusiasm, and commitment are to be celebrated. Cindy Reinecke, our bell and youth choir director, when safe, created small groups of bell choir and then chime mates to grace our services. Amanda Trainer, coordinator of Christian education for children and youth, had to get creative and reach out to children and families in new ways this year. She's worked very hard to keep our youngsters engaged and connected with the church. Amber Telford, our youth leader, has also been trying to keep our youth involved through social media and additional outreach, and thank you. Chris Chartrand, our custodian, has always had a sharp eye for detail and high standards for cleanliness, but this past year presented new levels of cleaning expectations none of us could have ever anticipated. Thanks to Chris, the church is spotless and safe despite the ever-changing cleaning protocols. And then Chris Chartrand Jr. We welcome and thank you, Chris Jr. Uh, he was able to join us as a staff as a substitute and we thank him for all the help he has provided his father. So the SBRC does not typically recognize church volunteers. However, the past 15 months have not been typical as we all know. The reopening task force came together and worked tirelessly to provide a seamless transition to video streaming worship services and also keeping us connected through Zoom. We wanna recognize and applaud their collective eff efforts as well as some others. Gene Cheviak, our outstanding liturg liturgist, organizers, and we thank her for her email outreach early in the pandemic. Dave Kaneen, he helped mastermind the Facebook live streaming and continues to fine tune our video and sound systems week after week. Colleen Rumsey, got us all connected through Zoom and has helped out with multiple other tasks. Patty Chartrand, our head usher, she has managed the sanctuary, attended to details, and managed multiple tasks behind the scenes to keep the sanctuary in good working order. Deb Samuel initiated the CARES email list, conducted social outreach, and has provided general encouragement week after week and month after month. Of course, again, Jackie and Herb for all of their musical gifts that have gone above and beyond their job duties often volunteering their services week after week, and so we thank them again for that. Neil Calvin, of course, who has been manning the, the live stream and assisting behind the camera week after week, we thank you for helping all those who can't join us in the sanctuary to be able to share in our ministry. Mary McIntosh, Kathy Van Buren, Karen Terwilliger, ushers, but also multifaceted volunteers. Of course, the loyal members of the mini choir who have brought us joyful music. Herb, Ann and Stephanie Lamb, Colleen Rumsey, Robert Thompson, Laurel Fitzmorris, Cindy Reinecke, and Dave Kaneen. The Bell Team, George Herrick, Kathy Van Buren, and Beth Van Ornum have kept us informed and connected. Art, Sander, Art Sanderson, our treasurer, now with the help from Lynette Burns and David Haas, keep paychecks coming and bills paid and did a great job negotiating the all-important PPP loan last spring. As you all know, the church functions on volunteer support, and for every name mentioned, there are five more that could be included. From missions teams to eco team cleanups, gardening and lawn and church maintenance, and so many of our volunteers wear multiple hats. Hats. We celebrate and appreciate our staff and volunteers as we work together to move forward in the coming year as old friends can reconnect face to face and we endeavor to bring new disciples into our caring congregation. We hope you will all join us after this morning's service in the front of the church for reception to honor all those we mentioned. So thank you all.
And please join me in our responsive call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. Testify to the goodness of God. Sing praise to God. Testify to the love of Christ. Sing praise to Christ. Testify to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Sing praise to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The opening hymn this morning, which will be sung by our choir, is number 500, Spirit of God, Descend Upon My Heart. Please join me in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, God present since, since before creation, creation fall on us now. now. Whisper, Whisper to us, us shout out to us, us comfort and guide, and guide us, alight on us anew, and revive our own spirits to love and serve. And serve. In, in Christ's Christ, holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our anthem this morning is, If God Be For Us.
then indeed. And I noticed I wasn't the only choir member who was bouncing along to the music. That's a great one to sing. Thank you. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, and I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans? Every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the regions of Libya bordered, bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this, listen to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn this morning is number 2237 from In Faith We Sing, As a Fire Was Meant for Burning.
Thank you, choir, for this wonderful inspirational music to inspire us to walk close to God. And I thank all of you who are here. I recognize some of you with the masks on. Some of you <laughs> have been a while. But I want to welcome all of you personally to be here in the house of God to worship together. You know, every time the scripture is read, I have goosebumps. It is such a wonderful scripture and a vast scripture covers all humanity. In one single sentence, you know, Arabs and Jews coming together. Uh, you know, it's unheard of in our world. In our world, you know, it's so, God had such a vision long time ago what God's will is for humanity. That his people and people all over the world should come together. And it's important to see that part of it. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. There is not a single person who's excluded. All of us are God's children. This is a reconciling ministry of God. From the beginning, God is trying to reconcile mankind, humanity, one with each other, one with God himself. And there are also the other things which it says other people jeered at them when they heard this wonderful word of God in their own language. They jeered and they said, well, they must be having a little early shot. And Peter had to get up and kind of squelch that. And I think in our, in our situation, it's important to see that jeering is unbelief. Jeering is saying, oh, well, well. Oh, that God's word says that you always said that love your neighbor. What's the big deal? I can't love every neighbor which comes my way. And that is called jeering, which is unbelief that you don't want to take God's word, God's command seriously. You don't want to be welcomed by God to come into your life. And it's so wonderful. And it's wonderful because it includes all of us. And all those who, long time ago, we were no people. We were all scattered all over the world in the United States. What a great testament for the United States to say that all of us who come here, who live here as people of God, all of us are invited by God to come together as one people. And likewise, invite other people to come together. It's so important to see that part of it. So did you hear about the story about the woman who called the fire department one day? She was very agitated. It's come as quick as you can, she cried. My house is on fire. Then she hung up. A few minutes later, she called back and said, hurry up, as fast as you can. It spread from the kitchen to the dining room. Then she hung up her phone again. A few minutes later, she called one more time. This time, the volunteer fire crew all ready to roll, and the dispatcher said, okay, lady, just calm down and tell us how to get there. It is obvious by her response that she was a little confused because she said, oh, well, don't you have your little red truck anymore? You know, we cannot get much of anywhere without directions, can we? You know, we put our GPS if we want to go to a doctor's office in Latham. We put our GPS if we want to go out and eat someplace else. You know, it's so important that communication of what is given to us takes us. Today is Pentecost Sunday, the day we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples and upon all of us. It's a red letter day. You are wearing all red. And all the day we mark as the birth of the church. For me, there is no better day than to bring our families and invite our friends to come to worship on this day. Because... This is the day in which God sent his spirit to empower the people of God to do the work of God in God's world. God has empowered the people of God, not here. God has empowered the people of God to do the work of God in God's world. This means that none of us ever must attempt to live the faith or walk the walk or do the work of God without direction from the Spirit of God ever again. It is important to see that God's Spirit has a plan for us. 
God wants to direct us in one way, in the way which God has planned for us to go that way. You know, for example, if there, somebody's launching a rocket, they have the coordination, they have all those things figured it out. And when the powered up rocket goes, lifts off, you know, it doesn't go here or there, it goes to the destination, destination which is prepared ahead of time. And it, it's important to see that part of it, that it is the Spirit of God which propels us to the place where God wants us to be, to serve where God wants us to serve, to meet those people whom God has prepared already to meet, to worship with people. It's so important to see that part of it. As we look at the passage this morning, the wind and the fire of God's Holy Spirit swept into the lives of the disciples and believers in the early church and changed their lives and their trajectory. You know, all of us, because of our gifts, we have our own trajectory in life. None of us plan in such a way that our trajectories go in this direction. And in the church, that is, it is important for us to see that the trajectory is set by God, not by us. The trajectory is set by God, by God's Holy Spirit, who empowers us to go in the direction where God wants us to go. You know, and we have to face all the obstacles, just like a rocket faces all kinds of obstacles in the space. But it has the trajectory to go because it is pre-conditioned in such a way that it reaches the destination. The wind and the fire of God's spirit swept into their lives. The wind blew through them with the awakening. The fire shaped their lives and gave them the direction. I was talking to my wife about a long time ago when we were in Bainbridge, I think. Uh, we took our children to go to Vermont for a brief uh, respite. So we went to see the uh, Vermont Institute of the Natural Science where, the, you know, where there is a canopy, forest canopy, if you've ever been, that's a beautiful spot. And you have to go real early because they shut down at 10 o'clock in the morning. And the canopy is huge where the raptor birds fly in that, within that canopy in that forest. And you get to watch that. And it's a beautiful spot to be with the children to see, for them to see a raptor, for them to understand how God has created. And at the same place, we happen to be at the glass factory. That's where they've made you know, very important uh, glass manufacturing is happening. It was a fascinating thing, but it was also a spiritual experience for me. That experience is one which I think describes the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It began with a simple phrase by the tour guide. She was showing us the inspection room. All of a sudden, we heard a loud crash. Many of us jumped and all she explained was that, you know, when you get to the showroom and store, you will find that we don't sell calls or seconds. There are no seconds in our glass factory. Anything that is imperfect and not of the highest quality, we destroy, then we melt the glass down and start over. And I kind of wonder, you know, how important it is if a human being takes such an important, you know, project to make sure there is not a single flaw in the crystal glass, not a single flaw. And it is inspected by experts and then it is redone. And I kind of wondered, when God looks at us and say, well, it's okay, you know, he can go and do whatever he wants to do. We expect that, you know, God invites all of us to come, but God never is never satisfied with who we are. God is always in the process of perfecting us. As John Wesley says, we are on our way to perfection. We are not there yet, but we are on our way to perfection because the Holy Spirit is working in our hearts, is moving us and leading us and guiding us. We are on our way to perfection. You and I have been created in the very image of God. We are not seconds. It may be trite to say, but God doesn't make junk. 
There are no, not any seconds among any one of us here or anywhere in the world. We might treat some people as seconds. We might look at them and say, well, they're not up to my standard. We might say because of their behavior or language or any of this stuff. Especially our youth and you know, young adults may feel that way at times when we look at them with judgmental eyes and we try to say, you're not as good as I am. But in the eyes of God, there are no seconds. We are all, as Paul says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have those little flaws. And the Spirit of God is given to us so that the Spirit can work through those flaws and help us to overcome those flaws. That on that day when we stand before God, that we are faultless as Christ is faultless in in the presence of God. We are held up to the light of Christ and declared fit for the kingdom. The Holy Spirit works within us and we are held up to the light of God. And when God looks at us and God is pleased with us, not angry with us and say, well, you know, God might take time here to change and transform us. God uses us not because we are perfect here, but we are on our way to perfection. Because in the hands of Jesus and through the fire of the Holy Spirit, we are being perfected. Jesus is the artisan. The fire of the Holy Spirit is God's to shape us. All we must do is put ourselves into the hands of the master artisan and let ourselves be perfected because there are no seconds. Trust the master craftsman. He is ready to shape your life. And the next place we visited was the glass blowers in the factory. The furnace is used to heat the glass to its plain and molten state. The furnace is cranked up to 1,400 degrees Celsius, which is about 2,550 degrees Fahrenheit. That is hotter than Midland during the worst Texas summer. It is in that heat that the glass begins to take shape. The glass blower reaches into the furnace with the hollow iron rod, chooses just the right amount of molten glass for his project, and starts the shaping process. He pulls the molten glass out of the furnace and begins the process to shaping it. He blows the glass into the beginning shape and then uses wooden models, molds, and tools to finish the process. And God does the same thing with us. At our creation, God breathes life into us. Then at our baptism, God breathes the presence of the Spirit into our lives. And shaping as process begins, which takes place at that time. God uses the wooden tool to shape and mold us in the fire of the Holy Spirit. God's wooden tool, of course, is the cross of Christ. Once the piece is shaped and molded, then it is brought out to the glass cutter. These are the artisans. A master glass cutter goes through a stringent training that involves a minimum of five years as an apprentice and three years as a journeyman. Glass cutting is a very precise and specialized skill which requires steady hands, dexterity, and concentration. And while the piece is marked, the pattern is done by memory, whether it is one, the flat cuts or the wedge cuts. The actual cutting is done with the cutting wheel because that cutting generates so much heat that the crystal would shatter. Therefore, the wheel is constantly cooled with water. The water acts as both as a lubricant and as part of the cutting process. Now, each piece, though created to look like each other, are in fact unique. No two glass cutters hold the piece or cut the piece exactly the same. Nor do they each do the piece the same way. They are unique just like you and I are unique creation of God's. When each piece is finished and inspected, it is bathed in series of chemical baths, cleaned and splashed. Now, same thing could be said for the waters of our baptism. Through our baptism, we are bathed, cleansed, and polished. The physical water may dry up, but the spiritual waters of our baptism still run and flow through our hearts and souls as Christ shapes and molds us into God's unique design. Brings us to one last phase in this process. Sometimes special pieces are created, 
are chosen to have further enhancement added to the etching. The etchers are true artists of the craft. They turn beautiful pieces of crystal into almost priceless works of art. When the crystal piece is created, a place is left out for the artist to etch anything from a woodland scene to a family crest. To me, you know, this symbolizes God calls in our lives. I believe that we are all called by God. You may not have discovered your calling yet. Mine is to be a minister. When I discovered that, I discarded my previous calling. I don't think we are genuinely happy if we are not doing what God has called us to do. I believe that master of artist and creator etch that calling on our hearts and our spirits. You know, sometimes we go through life leaving that spot where God is unable to catch us, to station us, to keep us in one place, to etch what God's will is for us. So what started as a tour became for me a powerful spiritual experience. So I will never look at a piece of crystal the same way again because of this day, Pentecost Sunday, what was taken place in the history of the church. And because of what will take place in the life of any one of us today, this day, any one of us can come to Christ and confess their faith in Christ as Lord and Savior. We can no longer look at them in the same. We can be, they have been changed. They will continue to change as we be perfected. I want to close with something Dr. Lori Worthen wrote. She was visiting, going through Waterford Crystal Factory in Ireland. After going through this factory, she said, I realized that I have been praying for the wrong thing. I've been praying that I would be translucent, that Christ's light would shine through me. When I realized after going through the factory, was I that I needed to be praying to be transparent, that no part of me hindered the light of God's love from shining through me. Not transluent, but transparent, so that no part of God's light, no part of God's character, no part of God's love, no part of any part of, even a smidgen of God is not hidden behind because we are not transparent. I'm praying that you will, you and I will become like a transparent piece of beautiful crystal, taking the fire of his love and light that has been put into our hearts into the world and letting it shine through us with grace and peace in Christ's service. So my friends, as we come close to, close to this message, let the fire of God's Holy Spirit warm your heart like the early disciples. Let the fire of God's Holy Spirit shape you, form you and mold you into the person God would have you be. Let Christ perfect you and make you transparent so that his light will shine through you and bring him the glory today and always. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, thank you for pouring your spirit upon us and upon our hearts, upon this church. You have sustained us through many, many years. You have provided for us. You protected us. You have led us. You have raised leadership, wonderful leadership in all facets of this church's ministry. We thank you for that. May your spirit continue to guide us not only this year, but many, many years to come, even after we have gone away from upon this earth. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Let us continue our worship as we bring God's tithes and our offerings.
Please join me with the prayer of thanksgiving and dedication, which is printed in our bulletin. Let us pray together. When we do not know how to pray, your Holy Spirit prays for us in sighs too deep for words. Hear our prayers for goodness in the world. Receive these gifts that they may help answer the Holy Spirit's hope for all creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We come now to our time of celebrations and concerns, and we have some birthdays to report. There are two people in our congregation who have birthdays today. Fred Henson is 50 today, and John Peterson is 70 today, so we really wish them both a very happy birthday. Um, other birthdays this week coming up, Robin Orr on May 25th and Carol Stacy on May 26th. So it's nice to have those kind of joys to report. And as always, we have a number of concerns and we appreciate the trust that people have shown in us to express those concerns out loud on Sunday mornings. Um, from Facebook, we ask for prayers for Ruth Jackson. And from the 830 service, prayers for Paul, whose house has burned down. And we ask for prayers for Shirley Dunn, for the family of Helen Groton, for Deb Samuels' Aunt Beverly's family, for Gloria Falls, for the family of Dave Enfield, for those families in harm's way in the Middle East. We pray with the family of Florence Skiff, who passed away the week before last, and the family of Jackie Crawford's brother, David Rose, who passed away on May 11th. We pray for Joan Fryer, for Packy Root, for Isaac Bledy. We pray for Rick, Mark, Janice, and Sharon, for Ruth Jackson. We pray for Sundar's family traveling to and from India and Jackie Crawford's father, Tom. We pray for Mary and Jim Wilkinson, for Bob Combs, for Renee Chichomsky and Karen Smith, for Fred Henson, Ivy Scott, for Roger, Lori, Janet Morrissey, and Matthew Ecker. We pray for the Reverend Vinay Samuel, for those patients in India, the COVID patients, to receive oxygen and other care. We pray for Sharon and Janice, Elizabeth Dunn, Dan Horton, Linda Sheehan, Peter Heron, Landis Dumar, for Deb Samuel, for Paul Smith and David Smith, for Jean Cooney, for Rietha Williams. We pray for Tim Parrott, Judy Davis, Michael Davis, Don Haynes' Uncle Robert, Roy and Martha Moffat, Elizabeth Hurley's grandson, Eric. We pray for Elizabeth Shelnick, David Nardachi, Mary Ingram, John Peterson's brother, Bob, for Fred Van Ornum, Stephen Frawley, Gunnar Walnut. We pray for Nellie Smith, Claudia Emmerich, Claudia's grandson, Tim Barnes, for Shirley Black, Eric Busick, Stephen Burnett, for Yvonne Hitchcock's daughter, Pam, John Moore, Sherry St. Louis, Paula Deming's friends, Karen and Carmela, Ava Grace, we pray for the residents of Riverside, Rosewood, Eddie Heritage House, Van Rensselaer Manor, and Diamond Hill. And we continue our prayers for all of those with COVID-19 and the healthcare professionals that continue to care for, those, for them. We pray for all of these people, as well as those we hold in our hearts, as our choir sings our call to prayer.
Holy Spirit of God, we pray with one accord that you would grant us peace, peace that passes all understanding, not only here in the United States, but across the world, especially in the Middle East. We pray that you would grant peace that passes the understanding of the Arabs and the Jews and the Palestinians and all those who are struggling to share the same land. We pray for each one's concern. We pray for all humanity in whom you have placed your living life, that we treat one another gentle, gently and hold one another carefully. Because you are a God who is watching us, how we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Almighty and ever-living God, today we come before you in all humility to ask your forgiveness. We have not done the things which you asked us to do, but yet we have done those things which are not pleasing in your sight. We humble ourselves before you and seek your forgiveness. We pray that you would empower us through your spirit, guide our hearts and minds, our hands and feet and our eyes and our words, so that they will bring honor and glory to you and they will bring peace upon this earth. They will care for one another and lift up one another so that all humanity will enjoy this beautiful earth and enjoy the life which you have given us. We pray for all those names which we have mentioned today. May your spirit fall upon them in a very special way. Bless them and heal them and lift them up and guide them and give them your grace, O Lord. May your blessings for them for today be given even as we pray that you would lift them up and give them your grace. Almighty and ever-living God, as we fellowship outside for a few moments, that you'd give us your grace. We thank you so much for bringing all of us together. Even as we are afraid at times to be in close proximity to each other, you have given us guidance through our medical community. Help us, O oh Lord to continue to thank them and lift them up into your presence. Be with each one of us, even as we leave from here, that your presence go with us. May we continue to live for you. Well. Almighty and ever living God, we pray that you would be with us, that we can Oops, I have no idea where, where this is coming from. Somebody hacked my phone. <laughs> Thank you, God, for humor in, in technology <laughs> as we blunder our way through, that your spirit continues to share the joy with us and the humor with us. And we thank you for our church family, which laughs at one another and shares the joy of laughter. So today we ask you to unite us and send us forth from here. May your spirit guide us and lead us. This I pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is sung by our choir, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine, number 465.
Please join me in the benediction. I will request those of you who are able to stand. Will you please stand? Let us pray together. May, May the, the Spirit, Spirit of God, of God sent, sent forth, forth to create, to create stir, stir in your hearts and minds and souls, souls a, vision a vision of new creation. creation. Go, Spirit-filled people of God, go in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen.